What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here, and today we're going to look at how to adjust your Husenfeld sprint pedals, the, all the pedals, all three pedals themselves, and the software. Let's get started. All right. What's up Sim Racers, Larry at TJR Sim here and today we're going to look at some Husenfeld uh, sprint pedal adjustments on this particular one on the clutch itself. Now I already pre-loosened up the nut but this is all you're going to uh, be messing with. Now out of the box it comes there's three little holes here for to adjust it. If you adjust it to the lowest setting that's going to be the lightest uh, pull, li lightest force rather on the clutch. And the higher up you go which right now it's at the middle position which you won't be able to see it until I pull this bolt out. Uh, that's how it comes factory. You can make it even harder. Pretty neat how you have the different uh, How easy it is to make that adjustment to make it harder. You can also adjust just your preload right here Which I did it a while ago. You can see right now This is all the way or coming out and that is making it a little bit lighter pedal uh, However, if you start going back the other way, it makes it considerably heavier just with the setting that it already has there uh, so uh, really surprised how heavy actually I was able to make it uh, just off of this uh, spring. So the spring is really dang, really, really strong. I can I can feel the tension and everything getting loose. I don't know how loose I got to make it. You know, we're just going to work with this together here, guys. See, it seems really loose here at this point. And you can see that I've got almost all the space taken up. Now this one here, you know, I just broke this one loose basically. Uh... I don't think it's actually necessary on that one, but you can see it's pretty loose. I think that might do it here. Let's pull off this nut here and see if it'll allow me to uh, slide this in and out yet. Oh, get the little washer here. Little washer. think well maybe maybe a little bit more here now that's really light so that's probably gonna do the trick <laughs> hey baby it's my oldest daughter saying hi Wow, look how light that is. Okay, there we go. Total tension off. Now you can see where you have no tension here. So we got to really loosen this puppy up quite a bit here. It wasn't totally apparent how far you had to loosen it up in Neil's video. However, I just really appreciate that he does his videos. Uh, but anyway, push it on out. See, yeah, it was a lot easier to push out now with my finger. Save the washer and stuff. And here we go. Of course, the socket a cap screw. Comes with all the tools, of course, like I mentioned. And now we'll be able to see the three adjustments here. So here you go. There is your three adjustments right there. So you can see that it's on the middle setting. If you go down, if you push this down, see, it goes to the lowest setting. That's going to be the lightest clutch resistance. This is all about your 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 lever arm uh, action here, as far as your um, uh, how do I want to say it. Basically, the higher up you go, you have a, a different lever arm moment, and the higher up you go, the more resistance there is, a lower, less resistance, because this higher up puts this on a higher angle, which creates more resistance in that sense. So, uh, anyway, let's adjust it up, how easy it is here to adjust it on up to that setting, and that's why you want it loose too, because it allows you enough room to push this back, as you can see in the hole, uh, to put your bolt through there. So I'm going to do that now. And there we go. We're locked in. Let's go ahead and secure the nut down. Put the washer back on. Wow, was that easy. 
this is what I like about these Husenfelds is, is how easy it is just to make adjustments. Now I could actually go ahead and start playing with it right now. It feels about the same as what it was a while ago, but I have this spring as loose as it can possibly go, right? I mean, this is totally no tension, no extra spring tension there until I start collapsing it on itself. So let's tighten this puppy up real quick. Excuse my doggies in the background. Get the right end here. I said, and don't believe it has to be really extremely tight uh, because you know it's contained, right? All right, so grab our special little tool. Now you can see what this little funky tool is about here with all these extra cuts and stuff, and it's just so it can fit in here. Uh, because if you were using a wider one like this, this edge doesn't allow it to get in there. I'll show you here. For instance, this is another tool that comes with the kit, but actually would fit this nut here, this tool here. But, however, you can see that, uh, let me tilt this forward a little bit. You can see you can't get it in there, rotate it in there around the nut. So, that's the problem. That's why they make these special little tools. So, do not lose this puppy. You will need it. Anyway, that's loose. Let's go back to tightening it down. And I may speed the video up here, although I'm going fairly fast. <laughs> I need that little Benny Hill theme song right now. I forgot how it goes, actually, but for my older subscribers, you know what I'm talking about. We're just chasing the person around. Okay, I can feel the tension coming on now. And holy cow that's actually quite a bit stronger now I know it's hard to relay this in a video but I, I have not really put much tension on this spring when this spring was originally adjusted this nut instead of being here at this point it was more like here at this point uh, so quite a bit further and I already have as much tension on this lever just from my memory of pulling it just a while ago as what I had so holy shit that can get really strong uh, wow I like that I'm really gonna like this setting now this setting I believe is really gonna wear the wear you out let's tighten it up a little bit more uh, just for good measures when we get it out there before I mount it all back up onto onto the rig here wow that's a lot now you're gonna want ahead and readjust your recalibrate your software uh, for that Wow, that's oh that breakover point is so strong right there. Wow, very impressive. Okay, so I think this is feeling really like a race car clutch here now. Then now we're cooking here. The other one, actually, to be honest with you, the original setting on medium was plenty strong. I think for me in practice, uh, it was it was enough resistance to keep you from not getting overly tired when you're using a clutch, but. Uh, uh, but still enough resistance to feel like you're actually using a clutch and not a toy or anything. And of course, this is obviously not a toy here. This is high-end stuff. But yeah, that's it. That's the look of the clutch. We'll look at the braking stuff here at a, a later time as well. I'll go ahead and ch adjust these out. This is actually the setting that it comes with on the brakes. And you can, of course, make it softer or harder. But this is kind of a good middle point right there. But anyway, now let's look at the Husenfeld Sprint Pedals brake adjustments here. And of course I'm using this free free nilly on my cell phone here <laughs> because it projects a nice concentrated light. So let me explain the brakes here real quick though. So you got these rubber bushings right here, right? Well, you've got three of them. You got a large, or sorry, uh, an extra large, a large, a medium, and a small. And that's what you got in the package. Now, however you want to arrange these is totally subjective to you. You also have these spacers. You got four spacers, uh, three all of the same size, and then one. Now, these are hard spacers. Uh, they do not flex. You're not going to flex them. And of course, you also have two of them in here. So, you, I'm not sure where I see that this small one would work, but you may uh, need it in some applications. But just looking at the charts, I didn't see where this small one fits. However, it doesn't mean that I won't run across it one day. So let's explain this here real quick. I'm going to set those right there. To make this adjustment, you, all you're going to do is undo 
uh, this preload spring here, this lock nut, which is just a nut, and then you're going to adjust the preload out and make it soft, and then push this right here forward and out, and then pull the stuff off. So let's just say you want something softer from factory. This is the factory. This is the extra large bush in itself. If you want something softer than this extra large, let's go the soft route first, right? If you want something softer, all you're going to do is replace these top ones with whatever one you want to go with. So if you wanted to go a little bit softer, and of course this is totally subjective and experimental for yourself, but experiment with it, you know? But if you want to go a little bit softer, you'll replace one of these pla hard plastic rings out with one of these Delron rubber rings out, out right? Now to make it a little bit softer. Now, originally I said this is kind of more like a road car softness. I would say it's probably not quite a road car softness. It's It's pretty, pretty hard in practice uh, to use and I actually really like this setup here but I'm gonna experiment for you guys so uh, the anyway this would be the next softest one and then if you wanted to make it as soft as it possibly could you would use this this uh, medium one right and that would gonna that would of course replace you can see it's the same thickness right there right it would replace those two uh, hard plastic ones tilt this up there we go um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this to the softest one and, uh, give some feedback in my actual review of what I actually like. I'm going to actually experiment with all of them, but I, I imagine that, uh, this is, you know, going to feel subjectively a little bit softer, but I'm going to feel the biggest gain of softness out of this one. Now go on the opposite direction. Now, if you want to make it harder, uh, you're going to want to make the hardest setting rather. You're going to want to use this one here. This is the soft or the shortest distance. Now keep in mind these are all the same resistance, but the less compression or that or less I'm sorry, less travel that this rubber has, the harder it gets. So being that this has a lot of travel here from your from your moment arm, you can compress it quite a bit before you can't compress it. Well, this one you can't hardly compress at all before it, it hits its theoretical compression state right so if you go to use this one as the softest one you got a lot of gap here to make up so you're gonna to wanna to have to grab some washers now you'll add the washers up here you could add them on this side too I don't see any harm in that uh, however the instructions their instructions show just add all the spacers here on this outer side and I think that makes it simpler to to think about but you can pretty much See, grab a couple of these here and see how much gap you need. See, before you even start, right? Before you guess <laughs> how much you need. So that's not quite enough there, as you can see. Uh, however, if I add this fourth one in here, that's a little bit too much. So, haha, -ha, this is where we get this thin one. So, if we were to add this thin one here, now you can see that it totally makes up the same, almost the exact same space as the extra large bushing and that's really what you want to accomplish right so you'll adjust this one down here to the hardest setting you'll add these three you can of course add them in here or you can add, add them there whichever way you like uh, but yeah that would be the hardest setting and of course obviously as you want to go excuse me a little bit not so hard you're gonna drop off these two and add that one and then that's that's the medium setting right and then if you want to go a little bit softer, then of course you would add, add this one. You'd end up dropping off the soft one, right? Or this, I'm sorry, this shortest one, thinnest one rather. Um, oops, like that, fill in the same space. So pretty, <laughs> pretty easy to do. Uh, actually, you know what? This one doesn't quite fit. I think I would use this one here. Yep, that fits a little bit better, as you can see in camera. Uh, anyway. That's how it works. Oh, let me loosen this up here and go into it. But I just wanted to explain this stuff to you because it wasn't, even though I watch videos on it, uh, you know, Nils videos on it, it wasn't quite clear to me. And it usually it never is until you just start getting your hands on these things. But again, we're going to use this special wrench. We're going to loosen up this lock nut there. Hopefully it is in camera I'm trying to get this in camera for y'all guys there we go well let's get it over here there we go look at that baby 
All right, so we loosen this one all the way up, and then here's your preload adjustment, and it actually turns pretty easy. And you just want to adjust this out until everything's kind of loosey goosey on here. And then you can grab this. I'll have to take two hands here, compress it in, and lift it out. And it didn't take much pressure. And I could have probably loosened these up here as well, but it has washers in here to keep it from, uh, um, or allow it rather to swivel up and down. But this is the plate you're always going to use. And let me back out a little bit here. And of course, you got your spring with the little uh, plate that's in it. You got this plastic washer here, which is you're going to always use. It's going to go back together just the same way. Set this off right here. Try to keep it in camera. And then you've got the um, you know back washer, and then of course this this one here. So I wanted to go to the softest one. So instead of using this extra large here, I'm going to go with. Well, I am going to use this extra large, but I'm also going to add the soft to it as well. And I forgot now what I needed to make up for it. I needed to take something away here. Haha. -ha. That was that. I was trying to make up. Oh, I needed to remove one of the washers up here. The same thickness, right? So <laughs> it's really easy to get confused with this stuff, man, once you got all these little bushing or uh, rubber bushings out. But let's pull off the back plate here. This is what we're going to call it. We're going to pull one of the hard spacers out. We're going to place one of the hard spacers with the rubber one. And slide it in. You know what I like about this setup is there's no greasy. There's nothing to grease on this thing. So if you're used to something, some other products and stuff, a lot of times you have to grease the shaft and all that. You don't have to grease the shaft on this one. Pun intended. All right. So put the spacer back on. Slide your uh, your extra large rubber piece on. Add your spacer back there. Add or, or your back plate rather. We'll call it a back plate. And then you add your spring spacer. Then of course your spring itself, which slides over it. And then your back plate itself here, which if you notice, it has a little groove here on this and that it fits in. Just easy peasy like that, right? So you can slide that on like that. Sticking out, come forward, take two fingers. And it snaps into place, and that's it. Just tightening this thing down again. And uh, and keep in mind, you can actually just keep tightening this down to get a, a harder compression. But let's push it in. So that is actually, wow, that's quite a bit softer by hand than what the original was. Now, I don't have the preload that tight. Let me see if I go as loose. I can probably can to uh, still have some pressure on it. That's pretty loose there, so that's a lot of travel. Now keep in mind, here's one thing to note. You set your actual resistance, how many kilograms of force or, or foot-pounds of force you want a resistance in the software. So you can have this bottom out at this point right here by hand, right? Pretty soft to bottom out by hand. And more pressure you apply, as you see that you know, the rubber expand, that's when you're going to be at total lockup. So you can set this pressure with your foot at total lockup in the software wherever you want in this travel. If you want just it to lock up right here off the bat, just moving in a couple millimeters, then that's what it'll do. But if you don't want it to lock up until you just do a panic break and really slam down on it, then that's what it'll do too. So it's all adjusted in the software. These rubber bushings and hard spacers are only just to get that comfortable feel that you want in your pedal to mimic, you know, what you like or maybe what you're liking in a in a in your uh car that you go to the track days with, right? So that's all there is. Adjust it down here, tighten up your nuts, and you're boom, you're done. So that's a look at the brakes. I hope I explained it all well to you and leave comments below if you need uh, some extra explanation, but I think I covered it all. But anyway, that's another look at this, and we will look at the, probably look at the throttle here a little later. I actually really enjoy the throttle travel here, here as well, like it is. But All right, guys, so let's look at the throttle itself here. I'm actually just decided I'm going to put all these in one video. Uh, the, the clutch, I'm sorry clutch adjustment, the brake adjustment, and the throttle adjustment all in one video so you can refer back to how to do it 
easier. Uh, and of course, I'll put a little snippets of these in the review. But I did go ahead with the hard or the softest uh, rubber for the brake. But let's go ahead and look uh, at the throttle here. Now, initially with the throttle, it was it's now at the softest, lowest position. The lowest position is going to be less less uh, uh, moment arm or less uh, leverage. Uh, from this lever here. So the higher you go up with this nut, the harder it's going to be to push it in. The lower it goes down, your your moment arm's a lot lower and a lot easier it is gonna, it is going to be to make uh, the throttle resistance less, right? So, of course, supply tools that you have with the setup. Let me spin this puppy around. Try to get it in nice and tight here for the camera. But I like this particular adjustment here, and that's at the very lowest. But I'm just going to demonstrate for you. And this one, oops, let me go opposite here. Loosen it up a little bit. This one you actually don't have to take all the way out. It just slides up and down in there. And number one mistake I just did, because it did feel a little bit resistance, is you need to loosen up. The preload adjuster, you do need to do that first. So, let's make some adjustments there. Hold this little preload adjuster here and loosen up the lock nut ever so slightly. Spin it out of, out of, out of control. Now this travel here, I really liked, and I think it'd be particularly hard to find the exact setup that you may have had before an adjustment, but it's so easy to reach down, loosen up this nut, and start adjusting this preload on the fly when it's already mounted to your rig. That It's really not like you have to pull the whole thing off at this point. And that's what I really like about these. Another thing, another aspect I really like about these pedals is that I can make adjustments when it's on my rig. Now, my particular rig is a little bit hard to get to because it's up against the wall. But now when I move to my new location, the rig will be out and open. I'm able to get on either side of it without having to remove the pedal plate. But for video purposes, obviously, we want to remove this pedal plate. So let's adjust this puppy out. This one's a little bit tough because you got spring preload here. And as I do that, this gets, of course, lighter. Of course, you could use some pliers on this, I guess, if you wanted to. That's pretty light. Light enough, see, it's light enough now I can move it up and down. So you can see here, moving it all the way up, that's going to create the most resistance, which is, you know, I didn't even have to tighten this down yet, but you can see that, well, I don't know, I can feel rather, you can't see, but. I was to grab this. This is quite a bit looser, oh, tighter than now when it's flipped all the way down. So easy to move it back and forth. But you slide it all the way up. Quite a bit harder. Uh, a lot more resistant. So <clears throat> that's how you make your adjustments for that. Now I particularly like. In, in the middle is how it came, but I particularly like it at the lightest setting, and that feels the best to me. Now you can make it even lighter by loosening up this preload. Like you want to, the looser it is. You can actually go quite a bit loose with this thing. I know I had some comments, uh, or one comment, someone saying they they really liked it to be a lot looser. So obviously you can get so loose where you don't have any tension on the spring, and you can feel it here at the top. Well, it bottoms out, right? It's going to bottom out against these arms. That's the loosest you're going to be able to go. To see, then you start grabbing it, right? So, at the lowest setting, that's the lo lowest uh, preload you're going to go with those arms. So, I would add a little bit of extra tension in there, just so you clear these arms right here. And when the arms in the bottom, if this was looser, it's going to try to pick up on that. So, you know, that's a good uh, good info there for you to find out that we're finding out together here. So that's. That's as loose as you can go, this this puppy here. Now, if you want to make it tighter, of course, like I said, all the way back. Now, travel is another thing, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll tighten it up a little bit more because I like a little bit more. 
uh, pressure. Now, the neat thing too is just using one finger here and tightening it up, and it's actually quite hard. Not too hard, but it's got some good resistance to do it. But you don't have to worry about you're going to be breaking something on this thing. It's just everything's high end quality parts. So I believe that's about where I liked it before. Now, this is the, uh, if you tighten this back up, which we will go ahead and do. We'll need this one. Now keep in mind, this is the first, second time I've done this particular part of it, but I haven't messed with the bottom one yet at all, so we will do it together. Hopefully this will come out looking good. All right, so you got your resistance going on. That's how you want it. Now the next is your moment arm, or not your moment arm, sorry, your travel. How far do you want this pedal to go back? I like the setting that it's at now. There's like four hole adjustments there, but the setting that it's at right now, I really like. However, you can make this go further back, and you'll see a little, see that little rubber bushing in there underneath the adjuster? That's what it's riding on, or that's, you know, what's encapsulating this rod that goes through here. But let's go ahead, and I think I'm going to want to have the tension off of here because that makes the most sense. You got all the tension off of here, so it's nice, easy peasy. Loose as possible. Yep, nice and loose right here. Be easy to make adjustments, right? Got some slack in the spring here. Uh, you can tell, too, because the plastic piece is trying to come out a little bit right there. Not totally seat it within when it's really loose. So you want to want to make sure you get that thing seated in when you tighten it back up, too. Uh, but, yep. Yeah. So there we are. Again, take our Allen wrenches here. And what's on the other side? The other side is, let's see if it'll zoom in here, a nut. Oopsie. A nut right there. Again, I'll, you know what? I think it might be better if I switch this around to the back side and get in closer to this puppy. There we go. There we go. All right. So, got a screw here, or, or socket head cap screw. A nut, and we'll loosen it up. Pretty easy to loosen up. And I don't remember if you have to make this one yeah, you can't just slide it forward. You do have to take it completely out. So, no biggie. Yeah, because it has its own little grooves. There's the nut. Don't lose it. You also have, and get in here, a little lock washer. Get out of there, buddy. Not lock washer, but a flat washer, rather. Set those aside. And then you got the screw here and there. So you're going to want to ahead and just push this through and see how easy it is to push through. And you'll see, hopefully you'll see, <laughs> get in here. You've got a little washer there as well. You can pull this out. The washer seems to be stuck on there. All right, let's look at this puppy. And I'm gonna use the screw as my pointer, but you can see right there the hole that it's at, right? So you got one, two, three, four, five, five hole adjustments. All right, I'm on the third from the bottom. If I want more travel, I can go up one, two more to get more travel. So how you do that? is you can just take your screw, see if I can do it from the other, other side. Actually, I'll just take one of these little tools, Allen heads, see if I can slide it in there. Let me look, let me look at it from the back side here. Oh, that one's too big. I can grab a little small one. All right, there we go, I got it in there. So I got that little Allen head in there. And then, 
just pull it forward. Let's see. Let's see, maybe I don't have enough leverage on here. You know what? I think we have to loosen this puppy up too. Let me see. Just so it's at least free nilly, you know? That's free nilly. Yep, that's what it was. I just had a little extra tension here with this one. So, as you can see, by doing that, I was able to push it all the way up to the last position right there, which is going to be the most travel that you can get out of it. Well, let's just... So eager, I want to throw it, throw it all back together here just to show you the travel. But let's go ahead and th throw the bolt back in there through the other side. And I won't add the washer just yet because I'm not done with it. I just want to show you the travel distance here. Now, remember what it was before. Now, this is going to be the most amount of travel. Get you in a picture here. So, wow, that's quite a bit further. A travel wow, that's a lot of travel so that's very similar to what the fanatic travel is right off the bat this is how much travel i remember having with the v3s on the fanatic so if you're used to the v3s and you like that much travel you can't obtain that out of the husenfels as well so wow really universal so that's the most travel right so let's pull the nut off and slide that puppy back out and Grab my little wrench again, and I will slide it back in through here. And attempt to move it forward again. It's a little tough to move, to be honest with you. There we go. You kind of want to get some leverage here. I grab the front of the plate here and just kind of wiggle it in to each spot. Now that's all the way forward. Now that's as far forward as it's going to go. As you can see there, all the way in the front hole. Again, I'm going to throw this in there. I don't really need to add the nut on the back side. It's not going to go anywhere. But now we'll demonstrate the least amount of throttle. Wow, is that short. That is hardly nothing. So if you like a really short pedal or somewhere in between, there you go. So that's a look at it. Of course, put it back together in reverse, uh, you know, tightening this up, tighten up the nut and bolt on that side. But experiment with it. This is something that I would probably pull it off uh, off my workbench there to, to adjust out here just so I can see that I got everything lined up uh, in, in nice light. But, yep, that is how you adjust the th throttle, full adjustment of the throttle. So hope you enjoyed this uh, whole look at the series of the, of the Husenfeld Sprint Pedal Adjustments. And uh, we will catch you on the track. Ask any questions below. All right, Sim Racer. So let's look at the software, the Husenfeld Smart Control Center that you get to download, uh, of course, for free off their website to, to you know set up the profiles for your pedals themselves. Uh, go to the profile. I usually set my uh, default, rather, for the brake pedal is usually 37. Uh, but... Let's go ahead and, and look at it. You can see that all these pedals are kind of working pretty good without recalibrating it. Uh, but it does suggest that you recalibrate it. So let's look into doing that. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about all this stuff right here. So first thing you want to do is hit start calibration and then read it. <laughs> so uh, make sure all the pedals are the rest position. Yes, they are. Hit next. Press the throttle pedal all the way down. And you actually, it didn't say and hold. It should say and hold there. Because uh, I know the first time I did this, I pressed it down and let go of it. Because some of the games that you set up for calibrating, you do that. So anyway, press it down, hold it, hit next step. 
then it's going to tell you to release it and you're good next step go to the brake and same thing you're going to hold it so push all the way down as far as it'll go next step now release it next step clutch clutch is super hard now uh, all the way down next now I'm going to release it next and you save the calibration so that saves it to your pedal set itself but I, I like to go ahead and hit actually that saves it in your software here itself I think to save it to your pedals you have to hit save settings to your pedals but and there you go now you can see uh, between the clutch brake and throttle let's just go through these real quick here now the throttle I have standard is is 10 percent is standard is five percent when you first upload the software and I changed mine to 10 percent just because when I was in game playing I noticed I would be about this point which felt about like I was at the end of travel but you have to go just a just a smidgen more pressure on the throttle to close it off as you can see me demonstrating right here uh, so I just go ahead and push it down and see what feels normal that's that feels like I would be bottomed out and I went and adjusted it until it bottomed it out basically uh, so 10% dead zone at the top of it uh, seemed to solve the problem the 5% at the bottom that's pretty typical I like to leave a little dead zone off the bottom because if you rest your foot there you're not you're not taking off basically or something like that and plus between this software and the software and the games and stuff there's some overlap a lot of times but hey let's go on to the break now now the brake, you can see that it figured up 49 kilograms of force and bottom dead zone of 4%. Uh, the dead zone scene, I, I barely tap it on the brake here. You can see it reacting. I mean, this is just me tapping on it. So uh, that seems about right. Now 49 default, or I'm sorry, the max it was going to be is 65. So I'm just going to give you a, some feel. Since you saw that I adjusted this, to the softest setting. Well, actually, on camera when I was adjusting it, I put the small rubber bushing in there to make it softer uh, with the extra large bushing and the small, and that makes it a little bit softer. I went ahead and noticed I did that afterwards, and I changed it out to the medium one, and that way I can have the softest possible setting. So no plastic bushings in there at all, spacer bushings at all. It's just rubber rubber bushings at this point, and it's at the end of its travel basically as far as fitting in that area and uh yeah it's really spongy so uh, it feels a lot more like a real road car when you just hit the brake and uh the, the stop and you have that that nice little squish like a real road car but then you know after you've your your brake pads have come in contact with your calipers or your disc rather um uh, you kind of feel like you're pushing hydraulic fluid or something back even more and that's what this feels like it's got that extra sponge and it's actually quite hard to push down at this point enough so that when my next level racing seat rotates backwards within its little setting here so I really don't want higher than this uh, just because when I'm braking uh, the seats pushing me forward and I don't want to add an opposite force against my seat to, to prematurely wear out my motion rig right so something you might want to consider if you're using motion rigs now, if you're using a static seat, not a big deal. Make it as strong as you want to, but I'll just give you some examples. So this feels about like, <clears throat> excuse me, about where I'd want to be maxed out, but uh, I would have to go further. That's that's more like a panic brake. So I'm going to leave it like that because this is probably much, most brake pressure I'll use in everyday racing, but I have that extra threshold to do that extra panic brake or that extra apply more brake if someone hits their brake mid corner brake checks me or whatever like that so I like that extra leeway now if I was to move this up I wish you could hold this down it would just zoom up but you had to click it each time but if I was to put it to 65 max which you can do that here and push it down this is about where I was pushing it a while ago as far as my force goes but you know of course the load cell is only registering probably around here around 47 uh, kilograms or 50 kilograms but i have to go much harder to get all the way to 65. amazing that these pedals are so strong that you don't just snap these damn things off right <laughs> so definitely a testament to how high strength uh, uh materials that we're using here but that's way too strong i believe uh for for my motion rig seat here so i'm going to go on down and actually 
I like around 40 myself. So it doesn't matter that you calibrated it already. You don't have to recalibrate it after this setting. You can just go ahead and play with your brake at this point and be like, ah, that's what it feels like about maxed out as much as I want to put into this thing. And since you with the soft bushings, this gives you the feel that you may want. Uh, well, it's assuming you won't soft feel a mushy break all the way through. This gives you the mushy break all the way through, all the way to top dead uh, center there. So, or top, you know, bottom and out basically. Uh, so 40 feels about, I could probably go about 43. Now, you know what, I'm going to go back up to uh, 47. Gives me that little extra panic break right there. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with that. All right, so... And this is a linear curve. You can all obviously also change these curves here. I'll get into that here too as well. well these are different predetermined curves uh, as I'm rolling through it. And these are the exact same curves for all three of these pedals that you can that you can add. So here's a S curve. So it's it's light and it progressively gets harder, and then you know it gets a little bit um, harder at the very top, right? So, just depending on what what you're really looking for, uh, S slow, S on the S on the oh S on side. Oh, that's interesting. So S at the beginning of it, and then it ramps up really hard at the top. So cool. Slow start makes sense. Slow ending uh, makes pretty good sense there too, because you know if you trying to prevent lock up, you got a really linear curve, but you got a slow ending for when you panic. It doesn't quite lock up the brakes in this area. So that's really cool too. Uh, then custom, of course, you can just change it like this. You can change, you watch this little dot right here moving any way you want to. I'll go to the next one. Get one, two, three, four, five, six adjustments. One, two, three, four, five, six adjustments. See? Uh, same thing there. R. What if I wanted it flat? And then I want it this one tall I don't know whatever you your heart is content with you know you can come up with some custom custom curbs and stuff now what you feel through your pedal is exactly the same hardness or softness that you have before but you're, what you're actually making the car do is different the brake pressure pressure being applied to the brakes in the car would be different based on these curves so hope that makes sense to you and if you like that you can uh, save the profile but I'm going to put it back to linear. That's what I like there. And let's move on to the clutch here real quick too. Now, 5% was it was default. And for the clutch, you know, I don't really see any reason for changing it. It's enough to right now I'm resting my foot on the clutch. I have to actually push it in a little bit to get any. Because this, remember, we set the clutch to the strongest level right now. And um, I even cranked up the preload a little bit on it too. So it's quite strong. But I do like this S on the S side. S on side curve here gives you a nice little um, area right here to ride the clutch off the line and then then dump the clutch. So uh, pretty cool feeling there. I like that a lot. Now let's say you got all these set the way you wanted it. Be sure to hit save settings to pedals right there. Now everything saved your pedals, but let's say you want this as a specific profile. Now you can come over here and say save profile. And you can see I have two of them here. I have an iRacing 911 GT3 at 45 kgs and a named one at 65 kgs. This is predetermined whatever you want to name this. You want to call this Yoda 12, call it Yoda 12, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to, I'm going to do this profile as a, uh, see, HE, uh, we'll call it HE uh, uh, Soft. Uh, soft break. I'll do it like that. Heavy clutch. All right, because um, that's really the two main ones I changed. I did. I did actually change the uh, throttle too, but I understand what this means here. All right, I'm gonna save that right there. So that'll be the curve. But if I wanted to load, let's say you go into now iRacing, you wanted to load that particular preset all you do is why the game's loaded it doesn't even matter just open it up and say I want that one and answer all these questions if you want to change anything at this point you can the clutch the brake and the throttle you can change the top dead zone 
all this stuff, right? I just leave it on select all and say import. Now you see all my stuff changed. It's changed the top dead zone to 5, 45 kgs. Uh, everything's just the same. But my feel of my pedals, of course, is exactly the way I have all the bushings and preloads and stuff done. It's just what's being applied to the car is according to this software. So, pretty cool stuff. I uh, see open profile there. Do the 65 and import. Now it's at 65 kgs. And this is really hard to get to the top. I'm having to actually brace myself against my wheel uh, to pull pull in. <laughs> right? So, uh, pretty hard stuff there as far as the 65 kgs. I am going to go back to my testing one right here for now. Import that. And that's it. That's what I want. Now, if you don't say save settings to pedals, um, actually, you know what? No. It doesn't really matter. You hit save settings to pedals. That's just your calibration settings is my understanding. But, however, if you exit this software, right, and you go into a game and play, it's going to pull up the original software whatever your original save settings to pedals are is what's going to pull up on here so whatever you hit save to if you hit save uh let me see 65 kg just to show you as an example i'm going to import it and hit save if i close the software go back into it you're going to see 65 kg so whichever one you hit save settings to pedal that's the software that's going to be there if you don't load this software at all that's the setting that's going to stay to your pedals so uh, you may want to always open your software <laughs> and to uh, pick to select one, uh, the appropriate one that you're uh, racing with at that particular time so I'm going to keep this one as my default because this feels really good as my default setting and that's what I'm going to keep. But anyway, that's a look at the software. We already adjusted all the pedals out. And that's, of course, with the software itself. I hope this explains everything to you. And this was, very, uh, was informative for you for when you want to go purchase your Husenfeld Sprint pedals and uh, get them set up. So leave some questions below. Uh, thanks for watching. And we will see you on the track. I'm out. I look there. I look there. All right, guys. Let's look at. See, it seems like I'm looking over there. Over there. Where's it at? Right there. Ah, that's where it's at. All right, guys. That's where I need to look. Right there. I gotta look right there. I gotta look right there. Right there. There. All right, guys. What's up, YouTubers? Nope. What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here, and today we're gonna look at how to adjust your Husenfeld. Sprint pedal.